gentlemen, this is Matt from Public Whitetail, and we're moving on to our next episode of our how-to series, and we're still focusing on arrows, and I'll give you a quick follow-up on what we've been up to so far. We've bear shaft tested our Easton AccuCarbon 6.5s. We have paper tuned them without fletching. We've crested them. We've also weighed and spin tested these arrows. So that being said, we're gonna move on to the next part of the process and that being fletching. And with fletching, uh, we're gonna be going ahead and actually attaching veins uh, in the proper manner. Uh, but we're also gonna make sure before we do that that we clean the vein, check the veins, check our glue, check our surface, check everything before we move into it. Because this is one of the most pivotal parts of arrow building. Uh, you can add weight, you can add points, uh, you can add different types of fletching. Uh, your first uh, real decision is, do I do three fletches or four fletches? Uh, there is no right or wrong answer because we go back and forth through this discussion all the time on various sites, uh, various pages in which we discuss these things and everybody's got a different answer. So that being said, what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you what I'm doing this year, and I'll tell you what I did last year. For the last two years, we went ahead and I ran with three fletchings, and in the beginning, that was fantastic. I had no issues. Uh, again, started doing a little more research and played around because when I started doing archery, one of the first things I wanted to do was learn how to fletch my arrows. So uh, I started researching, checking out some other sites. People are doing some crazy things. Uh, there's different things called offsets, and that may, just means that your fletching is off one way or the other instead of a straight line. In essence, it'll be torqued, so it'll increase a little bit of drag and also help in our steering of the arrow as it moves through the air. Uh, but this uh, last season, what I did was I went a little off the rails and saw some target guys doing six fletches. Uh, what I did was I ran my three fletch and then basically you turn your arrow upside down in the uh, jig that I'll show you here and you do another three and that gives you six fletches. So it worked out pretty well at the longer ranges for me. This side I'm going to step it back a notch and uh, I'm going to change my veins a little bit and I'll explain the difference of those here momentarily. Uh, I'm going to go to a four fletch this year. So the most prevalent versions of this are three and four fletch. Uh, everybody has their own reasons again. Uh, there are pluses and minuses to both uh, and there's just a hundred different ways that you can do this. Uh, but our, our basic premise with doing this how-to series is showing you the basics, what you need if you want to do these things, and without using the shop's help, show you how easy it is to do this on your own. Uh, there are some things that the shop has that I may not. However, we definitely want to get into trying to do some of these things on our own, uh, make the project a little more personalized, uh, such as things like the cresting, uh, to maybe even a little bit better than some people at some shops would do because you have the time to dedicate to your arrow the way you want it instead of somebody working at a shop very hard mind you uh, but trying to get out a lot of projects at a lot in a little bit of time so they can make their money and keep their shop open so this is just another little uh, premise that I wanted to get into because I wanted to show you how easy this is because even somebody like me can get into this and actually do it the right way. So I'll go into our basic equipment here and explain what we have. Uh, first, we'll start off with what jig. Now there's probably a dozen different types of jigs on the market. Um, I went with Old Faithful. It's called a Bits and Burger jig. Uh, this thing is made out of pot metal, so it's very hard to break. It has two pieces clamp that holds your veins and also the basic jig in which you put your arrows right here and take your arrow 
slide it in, and that holds your arrow in a straight line. So as you're moving it around, there's a knob, three, four, and we have four clicks this year. Our jig is set up for four clicks. Now the cool thing about a Bitsen Burger jig is that it has three bolts right here, and these are basically hex nuts or threaded screws with no head, and you basically tighten in the bolt that you're going to be using. Uh, this top one is for uh, three fletch, and that's 120, 120, 120, equals 360, of course. The next one, which I have turned in this year, is the 90. So there's four clicks on the knob, 90, 90, 90, 90, 360. The last one is, and let me get the numbers right, 75 by 105, which means you're going to have two fletchings out of four, which are very close, and they're going to be a, a quite a distance away from the other two fletchings on the other side. So think of it as a capital X, turn sideways, uh, kind of like an X-Wing fighter from Star Wars, uh, basically that configuration. Don't know about it, never tried it, don't think I ever will, uh, but you never know. So in essence, long story short, this is our fletching jig, and we will take our vein, once we go ahead and put it in the clamp, apply glue, and we'll set it on, which this is magnetized, and we will attach the fletch to the arrow. It takes about 30 to 40 seconds for the glue to dry, and next I'll go into the different things that I'm gonna be using uh, to complete this task. So, moving forward, one of the first and most important things is to make sure that our arrow shafts are clean before we apply glue. So, go to your drugstore, Walmart, wherever, and get yourself some 90% plus alcohol. The alcohol will be applied to a uh, paper towel, rag, whatever, and what we're gonna do is clean the shaft where we're gonna be applying our veins and our glue and making sure that shaft is clean. Uh, this costs about, I don't know, a buck, two bucks, if that, uh, but it is alcohol, so keep out of the reach of kids. Moving forward, once we make sure our uh, arrow shaft is clean, we're going to apply a wrap. Now, some of you may have used wraps and some may not, uh, but this is a string. I have nine left of this pattern, kind of like it, and it has basic flame. Now, the reason I, the other reason I do like this is it's white. So if we make a successful shot this year and we get a kill, this white is gonna be able to give us a, a glimpse of what kind of blood we get. Now, going forward, as we move on, we'll talk about the different types of blood, the different types of shots, and because blood, depending on where it is in the body, is gonna either be a bright red or a pink, a regular red, or a dark red, and or maybe a more black or a brownish version. And we'll talk about the different colors of blood in those shots and why they would get caused. So that being uh, said, uh, moving on, the beans I've used in the past, uh, I've used two from Boney. Uh, one is a white with a red, matches, the, uh, matches our uh, wrap that we used. And the other one last year I used is an extra, it went a little bit cheaper and went to a one from Blackout. Uh, it's a basic red. All three of these are a two inch vein and they're about a half an inch tall. This year, I'm gonna be moving into uh, another brand. I wanted to try something a little different. It's a four inch VMAX by Veintech. And here it is um, against the paper. Uh, we'll see if we can get this paper here so we can give you an idea of what we're dealing with. This is this year's vein. Last year's vein, and we'll pull out one of the bonings so we can compare the two, so you can see exactly what we're going for. These are the two veins that we'll be using this year. Now, I enjoyed these. Uh, the boning veins are fantastic, great quality, and they do the job. However, uh, I wanted to try uh, to use a little bit longer vein after I did a little more research and saw some people having some real good success with a longer four inch vein. 
So we're going to be giving those a shot and we'll be thoroughly testing them once we attach them. Uh, if we don't like the vein, we have our strip tool. And if you have already arrows that are already uh, fletched and you want to change the vein or somebody at your shop wants to change it, they're going to use a tool like this. And basically it has a blade here, not quite razor blade sharp. It has two different surfaces that you can use uh, to scrape and cut your vein off and also clean the shaft before you go through your alcohol treatment. Next, uh, what I use for my glue, uh, some people use uh, super glue. Uh, every aero company has their own brand of glue that they like to use. Every tech likes their own. Uh, I started off by using the uh, boning platinum. Uh, this is a uh, fletch type and uh, the platinum. I'm sure there is a lower version too, but this has worked quite well for me. Uh, it is a super glue, it comes out similar to a gel instead of a liquid glue. Uh, but we'll put this on to our veins and we'll go ahead, move the clamp, <coughs> excuse me, down onto the arrow. And in about 30 seconds, we pull the clamp off and our vein is attached. Uh, we'll do a simple touch up, uh, but the uh, one of the last pieces of equipment that you'll need, one of the cheapest, paper towels. Paper towels you may go through quite a bit of. Uh, and cleaning up your shaft, uh, if you use too much glue, if you need to wipe some stuff down, uh, if you need to just touch up an end and get some uh, glue, maybe it gets a little too close to the knock, depending on where you place your vein. We want to make sure that we keep that, uh, keep what isn't vein clean uh, so it doesn't attract any dirt or uh, mess up any weight by adding an extra grain here or there. Uh, to some people that will make no difference. To others, it will make every bit of difference. So, because we want a clean, uh, finished appearance uh, to our arrows once we get them done. So, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and flip the camera around. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you this process. I'll try and give you a good top-down version so I can let you see as much of the process as possible. Uh, and if there are any questions, feel free to add any comments, ask any questions, throw your two cents in on exactly what you uh, do or have your shop do when they're doing their fletching. So let's do it. Okay, so what we have here is everything that we're going to need to do what we're going to do today as far as uh, fletching and wrapping our arrows. And let me just go through everything one more time real quick. Uh, we have our veins. These are our vein tech veins. There's a little bit better profile, and about a half inch tall at the at the tallest, and right at four inches long. Uh, like I said, could give us. It's going to give us a different profile than my other arrows from previous years, uh, but it's also going to give us possibly some different flight characteristics. So we'll see what we got. Secondly, we have our wraps here, and we have our jig back here. Uh, which we'll be going into shortly. Uh, but before we do any of that, we want to grab some of our alcohol, our isopropyl alcohol, not our uh, good after hours alcohol. And what we're going to do is clear, clean and clear uh, the end of the shaft here. Uh, we want to be careful that we don't touch the paint because we don't want to uh, break up our clear at all and we don't want to take any of our crusting off. So we're going to go first and grab just basic everyday paper towel, which will do just fine. Uh, now there shouldn't be uh, too much residue or anything on the arrow. Uh, they are brand new, uh, just out of the package at the shop. And all you need is a dab. I mean, if you want to go two, that's perfectly fine. And we're just going to grab, wrap it around the arrow shaft, give it a good twist. And just like anything else, when you hear the squeak, you know, you cleaned it off. And, uh, what do you know? Just a very little bit of residue on there. So it just goes to show you, no matter how new, uh, there's still going to be some kind of dust on there. And we want to make sure we get that cleared off. And we'll go ahead and do all six arrows here. I'll be right back. Okay. One of the next things, and I almost forgot about this, uh, just another minor piece of equipment. You, some may need it, some may not. 
Uh, but another thing we want to have is a small stack of Q-tips. Uh, that'll be for gathering up any uh, bits of glue or excess that we run away uh, and try and run down the arrow towards the knock or forward. Uh, we want to get rid of any major excess glue. There's always going to be a little bit of excess, uh, especially for somebody like me that doesn't do this all the time. But we try and do our best uh, to be very careful. Uh, now with the Bitsen Burger, there's a hole right here where we go ahead and we place the arrow in. And inside there are two uh, tabs in here and that is for our knock, for where we put our knock in. So that being said, we have our arrow placed inside uh, the jig. Uh, this is marked as a right offset jig. Uh, there are other types of jigs out there, as we said before. There's I don't know, at least a dozen brands I could think of off the top of my head. Uh, there's Goat Tough. Boning makes their own fletch, fletching thing. Um, let's see, but Bits and Burger, uh, I knew the name uh, when I was doing all my research getting back into archery. Uh, and when I had the chance to purchase one, uh, and it was uh, used, one of the used machines, uh, the price, I couldn't pass it up. So I was like, I got to try this. It can't be that bad. And something like this, it's pretty solid. This is all solid pot metal. So, I mean, it will hold up as long as you take care of it and don't throw it across the room when you get angry. Uh, one other thing we'll get into with setting this up. This is actually a right offset device. Uh, which means that when we actually apply, uh, when we apply our uh, our fletches to the arrow, there's no glue on this now, but when we clamp everything down, we apply it, it's going to be slightly canted off to the right. And I have mine set at a two degree offset. Of course, the length of the veins is going to exaggerate that uh, just a little bit more which is why I'm super curious to see how these longer veins actually do compared to uh, the shorter stuff I've used in the past. But basically, uh, the process is the same, and I'll do one arrow for you now, uh, and we'll explain why I have these mysterious marks uh, on my clamp. I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, but I have, there's multiple pen marks. Now, different people have obviously been using this device before me and I've added my own marks as well but basically this clamp when it holds the the actual arrow vein uh, holds it just like that so most of the vein of course is hidden within the clamp and we want to make sure that we move the vein to the same spot every single time how we have it positioned with every single arrow um, I do like to match mine up with the end no matter where I'm actually putting it on and then what I'll do is, and I'll turn it this way a little bit so you can see a little better, right here above where the clamp is gonna sit, there are two magnets. So when I apply this clamp, it's gonna take that clamp out of my hand. So I wanna make sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this is where I wanna place my uh, vein. Now obviously, you can see, there's about a half an inch overlap. So, with these veins, being that they're not the standard two inch veins, I am going to be pushing this uh, vein back to the beginning of the clamp. So, this is a learning, uh, learning lesson for me, uh, as well as you guys, because I didn't even think about that. So, that being said, we're going to replace it in and we'll stage it again so we can see exactly where we are and where we need to be. And that is going to about do us right there. Uh, we've got a little tiny bit of overlap. And I'm going to fix this by just pulling out uh, the vein or the arrow from uh, the tabs on the inside there. And somebody may dog me after this. Uh, but basically, when you're going, you're just doing one arrow at a time as opposed to uh, some shops will run entire lines of jigs. Uh, between four, six, eight, ten jigs uh, if they're doing larger orders for people. I have the ability to 
uh, sit here and concentrate on one arrow at a time and one vein at a time. I don't have to worry about doing a whole order for somebody else, which is primarily the reason why I did this. So, uh, one, I could learn something new, but secondly, I could really focus on what I wanted uh, for my own setup. And like I said, once you have the initial materials, uh, the rest of your investment is fairly cheap. Uh, but just like everything else in archery, prices go up, new products come out, but as a result, prices go down for other things that have been around for a while. This is why I stay with the, uh, the Platinum. It stayed at a fairly uh, decent price. And your veins, as long as you look for steals and deals at various shops and or websites, uh, you can find these for fairly cheap. I think I spent under $10 for 100 veins, which is an unheard of price. So, moving forward, we have our vein staged now. Uh, there's just a hair, uh, probably about a sixteenth of an inch uh, on the wrap, uh, extended from the length of the vein. And I think that's a good spot for us. I definitely like that. And I have the uh, back tip, back corner of the vein, uh, even with the back end of the clamp. So when I pull this off and I go ahead and put this back on, it will go to the same place. Now that's magnetized, so the, yeah, there is going to be some movement there. I have to push it around a little bit, but the ideal is once we apply the glue to the vein and we stick it on, that the jig does the rest. All we have to do is leave this vein on there for about 30 seconds and I'll be able to pull the clamp off, leaving the fletching on the arrow. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, an additional step that some people will do from time to time, if you want to, you can. I haven't had an issue with not doing it. Uh, some people will actually take uh, a Q-tip with the isopropyl alcohol and they'll actually clean the vein. Now these veins have been in the bag uh, since I've uh, owned it and I'm gonna run with this Okay, we've got our glue problem solved. Um, I had to go and on, trim off the top a little bit and cap. I ran a pick clip and down through there. And that uh, issue is here. solved. Tips so, in here. Without further ado, it's a good chance to get, get this first thing done. Be now, the important thing to, to the arrow. concern yourself and is to try and keep moving there and as the glue exits the bottom. Slowly. And what we're looking for is a small is bead of glue. A little bit of glue stuck in top there. And so I'm going to clean that up and I'll come right back. You don't want it to be too crazy. And keep moving as we go. If we get a bit too much, that's okay on your first time through. Because we have the Q-tips ready to go just in case. Now what you don't want to do is waste a lot of time because this glue will set up in about 30 seconds. Now hopefully my arm doesn't block this. And press it on just to make sure that we're even all the way up and down. And we'll leave it set for about, we'll call it 10 Mississippi at least since I placed it. There's been another 10 seconds already. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. And we'll see what we got. There we go. And we'll check the arrow. Make sure that we have good adherence the whole way through, okay? I moved it a little forward, uh, the vein, as I, and I initially anticipated, but we'll just make sure we keep everyone the same. Now with the Bitsenberger, cool thing about it is you can set it to either three fletch, four fletch, or a different four fletch like we talked about in the beginning. Uh, but when you rotate this to your next blade, you'll notice a click there it is, and there's the click. Okay, as we rotated the blade forward, I noticed we have a, a little bit of excess where I went back through where I thought I had not quite enough. It turns out it was just a little bit too much. So we'll just scrape that off of there with the Q-tip. And as you get a little bit better and more practice with this, you will see that you will be going through less and less glue 
And no, that's not, I thought that was a bubble, but it's actually a line from the, uh, uh, the flame decal on there. So, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. And we're just going to continue this process the whole way through the entire arrow. Again, making sure that we're even with the end. And I mean perfectly even. The cool thing is you do have a little bit of time once you glue this, but not much more than, uh, I don't want to even give it 30 seconds because the glue will already be adhering and we'll be stripping, uh, we'll be stripping off our wraps and starting over from scratch. So we don't want that, but you do have a little bit of time. Uh, you can work with it a little bit. And we'll go down through. Blue is flowing pretty nicely. Much better. We want to cap the glue because we don't want to have the same issue happen we had before. And when I magnetize that, it's not quite on the arrow, but the bits and burger jig allows me to slide it into place slowly. And we've matched up with our last fletch, our last vein. Leave it there. And I don't see a lot of uh, a lot bleeding out on this side, which is good. I'll spare you the 10 Mississippi count, and we'll just talk us right through this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the clamp. We're not pulling the vein off because we're opening the clamp before we move it. And there we go. And oh, we're looking great. We're looking great. Now we can start moving. Now, just because you're moving faster doesn't mean you want to move recklessly. So that's the, uh, there's always a threat that you can move a little too quick. But there is a difference between recklessness and comfortability. It doesn't mean we're not cautious while we're doing this because, like I said, even though some things are cheaper than others, we want to take care of what we have and use it properly. So like I said, we don't want to go through and have to crack open a brand new bottle of glue for just a couple of fletches. Okay, we'll cap this. There we go, and fletch number three will be done momentarily. Um, I do like these veins. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, there is some flex. Uh, they seem a little more flexible than the uh, than the boning stuff. However, uh, we'll see if that helps or hinders us uh, once we start test shooting. And speaking of test shooting, uh, I told you that we would be doing videos on knock tuning. Uh, something I discovered with these new Easton AccuCarbons is there was very little deviation. Uh, one thing that we do in knock tuning is we shoot the arrow like this and then we make a mark and then we twist the knock a quarter turn, 90 degrees, and we shoot again. And we're looking for any deviations to see if there's a uh, quote true spine to the arrow and I had little to no deviation so it seems that this at least for this bunch uh, the AccuCarbons they are uh, uh, holding true to their name and their process so we have one more beam to do for this arrow and we will be finished and I'm trying to keep moving because uh, talk, you, you, you don't want to get things too dry, but at the same time, this is information that um, had I not had proper instruction, I probably would be messing up a lot more veins than what you should be. 
but there's a lot of good uh, instructional videos out there on this. Uh, there's different people. Some people will throw in uh, some other tips and tricks. I'll actually be in saying something about tips in a little bit once we finish this last vein. Okay. Got it magnetized, and we're sliding it on, and we'll go ahead and leave that on. And getting back to tips, uh, something picked up on Knock On Nation that we'll go ahead and we'll be double checking afterwards because I already noticed it happening right here. Uh, it's called tipping and tailing, and basically now that we have our vein set. Uh, we can't obviously move them around too much, uh, but something to help them stay on uh, just to make sure this is like a, a, a deadbolt on your door. Uh, we're going to add a couple of dabs of glue to the tips of the veins and to the tail of the vein. So the front and back of the vein, uh, let's say you do shoot through a target. Let's say you do uh, send one into the into the weeds while you're practicing uh, that can prevent uh, veins from being taken off uh, if they have proper amount of flex and a little bit of luck so it's a little more than our 10 Mississippi and there we go with our two degree right offset I think it came out pretty good uh, the only step I have to do, which I won't bother doing on camera because I just explained it, is we're going to tip and we're going to tail each of these veins. So I'm going to close that one out there and set this one up. See you in a minute. So that's our uh, finished product. Uh, hope you're happy with it. Uh, it's a uh, Matter of choice and colors for everybody. Everybody's a little bit different. Uh, some people get pretty crazy. Some people stay plain. Some people don't even use the wraps. Uh, there is something to be said for the wraps, especially when you have white on there. Uh, if you don't have a white colored arrow, uh, you can't really see what type of blood you get from your shot should you get lucky enough to take one and hit an animal. Uh, that being said, uh, everybody else has covered it enough, and I've covered it earlier enough, what colors of the blood we're looking for when we look at that wrap. Uh, ultimately, it could be a hint to you as to A, if that deer is going to go down soon, or B, you're going to better put your walking shoes on because you could be moving through the woods for quite some time should you get a gut shot uh, in lieu of a double lung or a single lung shot. So, if you have any questions, or have any comments on maybe how you set up your stuff or maybe how you have your shop set up your stuff, uh, send them out. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you. Uh, this is just another thing I chose to learn. Many people have everything done at the shop. Uh, J.R. Archery definitely does a good job. Uh, he handled a bunch of Zach stuff last year and it came out fantastic. But I also wanted to show this video to show you that, hey, you can do this too. Uh, not everything is impossible and not everything has to be done by the shop. You can add your own personal touches of stuff and it'll work just as well because the more you do it, the more you learn. So, the next step for me is to get the rest of these arrows fletched, which I'm going to do right after I turn this video off. And uh, then we're going to move on to our next episode, which will be tuning now that we have some shafts on there. So we'll double check it out. We're going to do another paper tune video. I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit shorter since you guys got the gist of the last one. Ultimately, now that we have veins, we're going to move on to uh, see if we have to retune or untune, which we shouldn't have to do much of anything since we fixed almost everything with the bare shaft tune. So till next time, uh, we're going to get ready and make our plan for how we... Uh, we want to route out the uh, Great American Outdoor Show coming up here in, uh, in another week. Uh, we're here at the uh, end of January, so we all know what that first week of, of February means, that first full week. So on the 4th, we will be there. We're going to be on Instagram. We're going to be doing a 
YouTube Live, we're going to be doing Facebook Live, and probably going to be doing some Twitter too. Uh, Zach's a lot better at that than I am, that's for sure. So, But we're definitely going to be hitting all our different platforms and trying to post some pictures uh, with some special guests maybe uh, on the webpage, which is up and working. Uh, I had a little bit of a glitch there for a while, but we got everything solved, and I think we're going to be okay. So, until next time, stay legal, stay safe, and stay hydrated. Thank you.